So before we begin, I would just like to shout out my patrons, Dudley Reiner, Crimson, Project Mercury, Damacus Whitewood, Consular, Nude Banner, and Ten. I'm very much grateful for your support. And if any of you want to support me on Patreon, you can always find the link in the description below. Hey guys, I'm Naya and welcome back to the channel. For today's video, I decided to do the breakdown of the regionals that happened yesterday because there were a couple of them and this is the first official regionals weekend after Power of the Elements release. And we have fourth world regionals, Sioux Falls, Knoxville, um, Columbus, like there's there's a couple. And um, I managed to like get a couple uh, deck lists online. Of course, there's always, um, the source is always credited. So we're gonna go through those deck lists and sort of talk about the deck choices and the actual decks that managed to get into the top cuts. And looking at the first one from Sioux Falls Regional, it's of course a, spl a sprite deck list. And uh, interestingly enough, in this video we're not going to be featuring any tier limit deck lists. I was not able to get any and uh, I assume if someone was very successful with tier limit, something would be posted somewhere. So just looking at that, um, it sort of speaks for itself because from what I've heard, there was a huge sprite representation at most of these regionals, including actual top cuts when it comes to top eight. So this one, the Sioux Falls regional, first place got taken by sprite and the build is looking very, very basic and straightforward, which I think most of them sort of are, you know, just sprite stuff, frog stuff, hand traps. And um, I must say, I like it. Like it looks consistent together with the pot of prosperity as well. I think it's an amazing addition. Naturally, you, you don't draw, so you don't really care about that. And Chippo Tactics Talent is um really smart tech, tech choice simply because people play so many hand traps right now. And against Sprite, you know, you can't really stop them with only one hand trap. So you need multiples. And at that point, if they have talents, they can either look at your hand before you're able to drop the second hand trap or you... I don't know, bait uh, an additional ash out with it, or you just get hit with like two of them or one of them, look at the hand and actually rip a starter for their opening play. So I think it's, it, in theory, it probably is putting in a lot of work. And looking at the extra deck, pretty standard for sprite and in the side deck the deck choice i'm most excited about is definitely a pointer so i did the deck choices tier list uh, or the deck cards tier list and i put a pointer in decent but i think i should have put it a bit higher because i think it's very very important for the sprite deck so yeah here we see a dd crow in the side which i guess you know it makes sense like is the first regional, you can't really know what to expect. Nibiru in the main is kind of bold though, but um, from listening to the deck profile, um, they said that Nibiru would be considered like cuttable from the main deck, which also makes sense. Moving on to the next deck, we also have Sprite. So the second place from fourth word, um, the deck is pretty much the same for the most part, but they did play the Nimble Beaver instead of Deep Sea Diva. Now this engine pretty much is personal preference if you play D.Va or this. So if you're planning on picking up Sprite, I would just suggest that you test both of them and you see. And also here we see two Sprite Red, and if I'm not mistaken, yeah, in the previous deck, deck list, we only saw one. So Red is kind of like also personal preference, I would say. It's really nice to get it up with Starter, especially if your plays get disrupted. So that's something to keep in mind. And Cross Out in the main deck. Cross Out, um, <laughs> I just I tested yesterday against against Sprite and I lost game three because they cross out my Dark Ruler. So I think cross out is really important, but you can either decide to side it or main it. Um, I think maining it is sort of like you're expecting to play also a lot of mirror matches. So it might work at a higher tier level event. So yeah, and uh, looking at the side deck, they actually played two Summon Limit, which um, Summon Limit by itself, I think is a really, really strong card, but I I didn't really expect it to see actual play in some of the meta decks, like this sprite list is, maybe something like an Outlist deck, of course, but I don't know, that's, that's a, an interesting surprise. And then looking at the extra deck, they played the Underworld Goddess, which of course, together with IP, it's really, really strong. And then moving on to the fourth word regional, um, sort of, we, sorry, we covered, yeah, we covered the fourth word, second place. And so this is the top eight in, at fourth word. And if I'm not mistaken, they had about 350 players. So it was a really, really big event. And um, yeah, this is uh, Pure Punk. And Pure Punk has been seeing a lot of, um, not only success, but like people were 
what am I, what's the phrase I'm looking for? Like, it's been seeing a lot of love. Like, people are so hyped for this deck, I think. And it just takes, takes the opponent completely off guard because it's just punk. So you sort of expect to see other engines and then you just get hit with a lot of punk stuff and the gizmac and a lot of hand traps because naturally the deck has so much space. And I think the field spell is what really pushed it even further. It's an amazing, amazing extender. And um, being able to draw like not once per turn, that's really, really nice. And then the next deck card I wanted to talk about is super polymerization. So with the Garura coming out from Power of the Elements, like... Super Poly is putting in a lot of work because Garuda is that applicable into so many different matchups. And also like Garuda, of course, it's amazing against Sprite. So um, yeah, the extra deck is quite standard for the Punk deck. And the side deck also, like we see um, there can be only one. So uh, a Floodgate and um, other stuff is pretty much basic. This deck played um, Nibiru as well, which I think should probably be a side card moving forward, uh, but I guess we'll see. And then um, the next deck is from the Columbus Regional, and it's actually the branded Eldritch Mystic Mind deck. Now, low-key, I really like this deck. Like, I think the deck is, overall, the Eldritch deck, I think it's going to be strong moving forward into this next format. And this was just a good, a good choice from looking at the deck profile. The person said they just didn't really want to think hard about what they want to play. So taking something like this makes a lot of sense. The deck is nice the deck is really straightforward mystic mind is an amazing card if people don't play around it especially because right now people special summon during your turn during their turn it's like it's it's always live the demise of the land so the way to mystic mind and um super polymerization as well they mentioned garura putting in a lot of work and the gizmic deck card in the main deck specifically they said that it's a to play around, uh, not Mystic Mind, to play around DD Crow because DD Crow would hit your Necro World Banshee, which they opted to side. So all in all, um, I like this deck a lot when I looked at it. And then the Vampire um, Fascinator in the extra deck. So a way to sort of, uh, well, not, not only disrupt your opponent, but to further your plays even more. I think it's really nice. Um, the only thing I thought about when I looked at the side deck, and it's actually something they touched upon as well, is the fact that they only played Lava Golem, not Sphere Mode as well. And I think in the Eldritch deck where it's that free to play both of these cards, you probably could find space to, f to fit both of them in. So... Yeah, I don't know. I'm I really like this deck <laughs> to be honest. And then again, Columbus Regional, we have the second place Sprite. So Sprite is like it's all over the place. And um, this deck list, um, let me just see if there's any actual differences. So it's very similar to the first one we covered, but there's no Nibiru in the main deck. There is a Monster Reborn though, which cool. Why not? Um, and then the standard stuff of like Prosperity Talents called by two red again. And uh, extra deck also quite quite basic, and the appointer in the side deck. So I think this is going to see a lot of play moving forward. And also Gamma in the side deck. So in the first deck, there was no Gamma, not main deck, not side deck. But I think Gamma is going to be such a strong hand trap moving forward. And uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. This is only the first weekend, but it's really interesting to look at these deck lists. And we're going to be moving on to the Knoxville Regional Top 4. Now, this is a Sky Striker deck list. So let's get into this one. Uh, they played they played everything. They played Striker, they played Adventure, and the uh, Souls and Illusion of Chaos package. So it's going second for sure, like looking at it from like the perspective of, you know, Mystic Mind Ruler, there's Lightning Storm, there's uh, Super Poly as well, together with Garura. Uh, the only thing that sort of throws me off a bit is the Desires together with the Adventure package. But in theory, like, I guess if you get your plays going and if you get everything out before you actually use desires, then at that point, it's just more consistency. So I don't have an issue with that. It just sort of surprised me a bit. A two shark cannon, I think it's going to be very strong in the next format. And overall, yeah, I like this deck list a lot. Like, I'm completely biased because I like Sky Striker, but... Um, I know, this deck list seems really fine. And then uh, in the extra deck, there's also Mud Dragon for super polymerization. And we see the third copy in the side deck. And then there's Token Collector. So hold on, let me just verify something. So there's actually Wandering Griffin Rider in the side deck. 
and okay cool that's really cool i like this a lot so it makes sense since it's a going second build and you have a legal knight in the main deck that's really nice i'm a i'm a fan of that and then there's um and the band played on like just one copy yeah the side deck is really interesting because there's like a bunch of two offs and one offs and the token collector is kind of surprising because for the most part i don't expect to see that many adventure things or sorts of decks moving forward but yeah i mean i guess because sprite is there is a version with adventure and overall adventure can still be played in sky striker in dragon link in just the basic adventure synchro deck so yeah i don't know i personally probably won't be citing token collector but like if you're expecting that kind of meta, it makes sense. And then fourth word, again, we have the first place sprite. Um, we're just gonna glance over this one because it's pretty much similar from what I'm looking at. And um, they play Ghost Ogre. So hand trap, the hand trap lineup is really interesting. Like moving forward, I think it's going to be a bit more established in the following couple of weeks. But for right now, um, there's it's pretty much all over the place. It's it's pretty much anything you think will work for you and the things that you're expecting. So I guess we can touch upon the side deck because I do see the uh, Pala trap card. I like I just blanked out on the name. That's kind of cringe. I knew that card. Anyway, so um, it's the Pala like trap card. I'm so annoyed that I don't remember the name. So the one that banishes and uh, this card's not for cost. So banishes a card. It makes sense because it's just spot removal. So yeah, really interesting tech choice though, because like you have so many different cards that you can play and there's actually no dark ruler anywhere. Wow. Okay. So there's no dark ruler, but like they decided to play to play this one. Cool. Interesting. Moving on, uh, this next list I just took from Zodiac Duelist. Someone posted their deck list because they got 10th place at the Edison Regional, but it was with Methmec. So I decided to cover it because I think Methmec is an amazing deck. I think it's going to be very strong moving forward and there's not enough good things I can say about this deck. So naturally, I wanted to cover it in this video as well. So looking at it, it seems very, very straightforward. And I just, I like that a lot. You know, you have your math mix stuff. You have small world to help with your, uh, I guess, your uh, ratios and to get to your things. You have uh, sinus mining as well. So consistency is there. And then you also have enough space to play a bunch of hand traps. And then there's the super factorial naturally. And in the side deck, we have ghost bell. We have uh, dark ruler. There's rivalry as well. Um, so yeah, everything is like, it's it's kind of standard. But I think math mech is going to be like at its best just the way we have we see it built over here i think it has amazing matchups with the top decks and um yeah overall like good for this person to to do that well with a sort of well not rogue deck but something that was considered rogue and i think it's going to be quickly moving up the tiers moving forward so yeah honestly i'm excited to see what mathematic is able to do uh, in the following couple of weeks and i think that's pretty much going to be it for the deck lists so all in all we saw a lot of sprite but there were a couple different decks there was no sword so among those deck lists and i haven't really heard anything about them like tier lament so i've heard people did well like they did well they had good results but maybe the tiebreakers weren't really there so they weren't able to top so it's not like tier lament completely fell off before even like getting started uh, but i guess the last thing i wanted to say before rounding this video off is i think tier lament is much harder to play than sprite and it's not just the rng but overall the deck is a bit harder and sprite sort of is getting solved again and again because it's it's kind of like basic and then you can add on, you know, you add on the adventure things, you add on the Hockey Fibrex Synchro stuff. But for the most part, the actual basic Sprite Toad combo is kind of like straightforward. You just, you just do it and then you can branch off into different directions with it. But uh, when it comes to tier element, you also have so many different versions, but all of them are harder to pilot. And then you need to take into account all of the like hand traps and different things you want to play and... I think it's a bit too soon to actually expect to see success from Tier Lament because also players might not be that uh, 
I guess was the word, um, they might not be that comfortable with the deck yet or that, that well prepared. So that, that's something to think about as well. So maybe that's why we didn't see that kind of, um, big representation but this is only the uh, results i was able to acquire like legit in the last couple of hours since i woke up so if you have any more results if you have any more info i would love to hear that and i would love to do like you know even more coverage of events because i think it's so cool to see the meta evolve from week to week from weekend to weekend so yeah hopefully this video was interesting to you and informative and all of that and if you liked it of course like it and sub to the channel and i'll see you in the next one peace